In astronomy, we often want to try to find the distance to a star. So there's going to be a lot of different ways I'm going to mention about finding the distance, and we're going to sort of work our way up the distance ladder, so to speak. So the very first way of finding the distance to a star is using the parallax method. Now this method works for, maybe I'll say this, um, works for close stars. Okay, so stars that are relatively close. Now it uses what we call parallax. Now parallax is a bit tough to explain just by showing you like this, but uh, I'll try. Um, let's say that you, let's say here, so here's me and uh, here we go, I'm a really bad artist, but uh, there we go, this is, let's say this is me, and I'm looking at, I don't know what happened to my ear here apparently. But uh, this is me looking, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up my hand. So this is something that, you know, it's kind of fun to try to do. I'm going to attempt to draw a hand now, so I don't know if I'm drawing it very well here, but I'm sort of, I'm drawing a hand with my thumb sticking straight up here. This is my thumb. Uh, apparently my thumb is quite large, but uh, if you look at this, hold your thumb out at arm's length in front of you. And what I want you to do, I mean, you can try this out right now even, so, um, you know, Take a look, hold your thumb out in front of you, and with one eye closed, it's important to close one of your eyes, it doesn't matter which eye, so close one of your eyes, and now line up your thumb with some object in the back. So let's say, um, I don't know, let's say there's like a door handle or some sort of thing like that. So let's just say there's like a door handle. So here you're going to sort of line up your thumb you know, in front of a door handle, let's just say, or some object in the distance. It's important to have something in the distance as a reference. So hold out your thumb in front of you at arm's length, okay, close one eye, and then sort of line up your thumb with this uh, whatever object. Now, without moving your thumb or anything else, switch which eye is closed. So if you had your left eye closed, now just have your right eye closed. And take a look at what happens. Your thumb which was lined up with whatever this object is, your thumb will appear to have sort of jumped. So all of a sudden, if I was lining it up this way, um, then maybe all of a sudden your thumb seems to have sort of jumped. And the reason it jumped is because of trigonometry, which we're going to sort of draw here. But what it really tells you is that you've just experienced parallax. Parallax comes from when you have a different sort of field of view or a different... Um, vantage point. So one eye saw things and sort of made a straight line with your thumb and goes this way. Your other eye, let's say, made some line and went sort of that way. So it sort of seems like this object here moved. And we're going to use this same thing. Um, now, actually, uh, parallax is actually something kind of funny. I remember when I was um, driving with my wife one of the first times uh, we were driving together, she would claim that I was driving really slowly. And that's actually because um, the way I was sitting, the uh, needle you know, for the speedometer, that was sort of sitting in front of the actual sort of speed. So what happened is from her angle where she was, it looked like I was going slower than I actually was. So that was another sort of example of parallax. Maybe that wasn't so clear, but the thumb way, that should actually be something fairly clear. So try that out. And if that happens, if that works, we're going to use the same exact idea, except we're going to use this with stars. So we're going to say step one. How do you do parallax? Well, first of all, step one, you look at... Uh, what you're going to do here is you're going to look at a star, and you're going to note where it sits, so you can actually take a picture of it. You can look at where it sits in relation to the other stars around it. So where it sits in relation to the stars around it. Okay, so you're going to sort of take a look at that. And then step two is going to be um, six months later What you're going to do is you're going to look at the star again. And again, uh, see its new position this time. So you're going to see its new position in relation to the other stars. 
So this is the idea behind it. Okay, so um, now the reason this actually works and helps us to know something about distance is because with this sort of parallax method like this, this actually allows you to see depth. In other words, you can sort of tell by how much something sort of moves. In other words, your thumb moves a lot when you sort of do this trick. That tells you your thumb is close. If you did that, let's say you put your thumb even closer to your face and then did that same trick, your thumb would appear to jump way more. And, as if, uh, and if you had really long arms and you had your thumb sort of way over here, if you did your parallax trick, it would seem to jump very little. So we're going to use that idea, and the idea is that we want it to jump as much as possible, so we need to sort of set the distance between the eyes, so to speak, the biggest possible. So what we do is we do use this method, because first of all we look at the star, we know where it sits in relation to the stars around it. So in other words, let's just say we we take a look at some stars here, let's say it's today. And let's say today then we take a look at this and we see, I don't know, a star here, a star here, and a star here. And I'll say then six months later, we would take a similar picture of the same star field, the same exact thing here. And of course, we'd have the same three stars here. So here and here and here. I'm trying to draw them in the same place. So if it didn't look the same, it should. Um, and then what will happen is this. The star we were looking at, which maybe was here, all of a sudden, maybe it's down here. So it's over here. It's sort of with relation to these stars. It was sort of over here. And now all of a sudden, it seems to have sort of it seems to have sort of moved. It moved down there. So that would be an example. If you could, if you could sort of see this happening, taking a picture once and taking a picture six months later, and it seems to move, then you can find its distance using the parallax method. The good news is this is an excellent method. It works really, really well. The only problem is it only works for close stars. But if you can find a star that's close enough and it actually does this, then this method is awesome. It works really well. So what do we do? Well, step three then, oops, uh, maybe I'll write it in black just to be, oops, just to be consistent. So step three is uh, now we're going to use trigonometry to uh, calculate the distance. So I'm going to show you a bit of trig here, a little bit of calculus, uh, a little bit of uh, trigonometry to calculate the distance here. So the very first thing we do then is let's take a look at sort of what's really happening here. So here what we have is we have the actual star. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw the sun. So we're going to have the sun maybe down here. Maybe I'll, I'll outline it with black just so we can see it. That is the sun. And what we do is we take a picture of it, let's say when the Earth is over here, let's just say. That will be the Earth. And let's say this is in, I don't know, July, let's just say. Uh, I suppose it could be June, but oh well. Yeah. So let's just say we take this in June. We take this picture. Now, of course, we have this distance right here. Right? We have a certain distance from the Sun to the Earth. And that distance we're actually going to call one astronomical unit. So it's really important as I'm going to define this over here. One AU equals one astronomical unit. That's the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. It's not precise because the distance from the Earth to the Sun changes slightly because our orbit is not a circle, it's an ellipse. But of course, then uh, six months later then, of course, we're going to be over here. Let's say we take this picture in January. So of course we have the same distance here. We still have the same 1 AU over here as well. 1 AU, same distance over here. We're going to assume it went roughly in a circular orbit here. That's because, of course, our sun, I mean our planet sort of orbits like this right here. Now what's really important then, well maybe I'm actually going to remove those just so that it's a little bit more clear. So we'll just leave it like this. One astronomical unit, we actually have a uh, value for it. So that equals the distance from Earth to the Sun. 
and we have that one AU actually has a unit, um, so I mean has sort of a number, so it's around 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. That's roughly what one AU is. Okay, it's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. Now what we do, this is important here, we're going to use some trigonometry in order to find the distance. So if we draw sort of a, a straight line here, let's say I just draw myself a straight line going down, I'm trying to draw straight here, straight line just to show that this here is a 90 degree um, angle here, this is a right angle, and then I take something like this right here, so this right here would be sort of the picture that I would take. In other words, I would sort of see that the star would appear somewhere over here. See that although the star was actually here the whole time, over here, you know, compared to the other stars in the background, it's going to appear somewhere here. But six months later, it's going to appear, it's going to appear somewhere over here. So you see that, that as we took this picture, so for six months later from here to here, the star, if everything else here, we have background stars, this particular star, when we were over here, we will have seen it appear way over there. And over at this time, when we take a picture of it, the star will appear way over here. Now, I'm really exaggerating these angles here, but that's okay. We're going to call this angle P. That's going to be this angle. That's going to be called the parallax angle. And we're going to call this distance right here, we're going to call that D. D for the distance away. And I hope that's clear. So um, this right here is the key to doing it. So let's maybe take a look sort of off to the side right here, what we do. So let's just say we looked at this little triangle right here. Oops, I'm supposed to draw a nice straight line here. So this is angle P here. And this here is a triangle. We want to find D. And we know this is 1 AU here, this distance right here. So how could we actually find this? I mean, uh, we can use trigonometry. We have a little trick that we know, hopefully. Uh, maybe you've learned so katoa or something like that, something about sine, cosine, and tangent. It turns out if you know this angle, which you can actually determine, um, if you know this angle, then you can actually calculate D. And that's because we know that the tangent of angle P is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So it's 1 AU divided by D. And if that's the case then, oops, I just want to make this clear. So that's 1 AU divided by D. And if we have that then, well, what we can do is we can say, well, um, if we define it as just one unit, then we can say then that the tan of P then is just 1 over D. Because if we just define things in terms of astronomical units, then we'll just say tan P is 1 over D. But there's actually something really interesting that happens here. Turns out, so I'll say this, uh, but... This is actually called a small angle approximation. So for very small angles, tan P approaches just P. And you can try this with your calculator. If you try really, really small angles, but tangent of some angle approaches just that angle. In other words, I can then say this, that parallax angle then is just 1 over D. And so what's really cool then is we can actually say then that we can actually write down this final equation here. So here's going to be the big equation here we're going to use. The equation is going to be this. So I'm going to put on the next page here. So we have this equation. It's going to go D, and I'm going to say in parsec, equals 1 over P, which is going to be in arc seconds. This is going to be the equation we're going to use. Now, I don't mean times. I mean like the distance, which is measured in parsecs, is going to be equal 1 over the parallax angle in arc seconds. Now, that is because if I wanted to get D by itself, I could say that D is just 1 over P. I could multiply both sides by D and divide both sides by P. Some people call this cross multiplying and dividing. Either way, I can say D is 1 over P. So see, that's what I've done here. D is 1 over P. So I'm going to define these, so just to be careful here. So D is the distance measured in parsec. And we're going to have to define that in a second. And then we're going to say P is the parallax angle. And it's measured in arc seconds. 
seconds. Okay, so it's going to be important to define these. But this is basically how it works here. Okay, this is what's really, really important. So in the next video, I'm going to show you some more details about this. We're going to define the parsec and the arcsecond, and we're going to see sort of how everything comes together.